two, one, action. Hi, welcome to a Rapunzel Rock Agency and Firebrand Radio Spotlight on the USA interview. I'm Tara Metalmoo Kramer and today I'm joined by John Spinelli, a journeyman drummer. John is employed by Seminole Music in Florida and in a managerial capacity, as well being an A-list drummer performing in many regional acts. Hi John, thank you for joining us. Uh, hi, thanks. Okay. Um, Seminole Music is an established and highly respected institution in the Tampa Bay area. How long have you worked here? I've worked here for 16 years, but I also taught drums here for a couple of years before that. So I've been here a while. Wow, <laughs> excellent. And at what age did you become interested in music? I was 12 or 13 when I really started becoming interested in music and it was KISS. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but I, I started. I didn't get my first drum set till I was around fourteen. Okay, very good. And what musicians other than Kiss and bands would you cite as primary influences? Kiss is the first one, definitely. Um, but as I got older, um, there was many others. Uh, definitely Led Zeppelin okay. came in, but that was down the road. Because it was either Kiss or Led Zeppelin back in the day, and, and glam rock won. <laughs> but as I got older, I greatly appreciate the, the music of Led Zeppelin and John Bonham. Just amazing stuff. Uh, today, there's so many influences from pop to country to, you know, I'm not much of a jazzer, but the fusion stuff, that, that kind of stuff. But uh, definitely more of the... Uh, pop rock growing up okay. when I started playing. Uh, lovely, thank you. Um, can you tell us about some of the bands you've performed with in the past as well as presently? Back in the day, um, the very first band that I started actually playing drums in when I started playing with the, the singers at the time, he, we, were, we, were, we were just hanging out and um, he said, uh, man, I want to be in a band. I want to be like Paul Stanley. So I'm going to sing and play guitar. And he said, what do you want to do? It's like, play drums? I don't know. I didn't know. <laughs> so I said, play drums. And that band started um, as a garage band, of course. And then we got together with some other guys. And that the nucleus of that band turned into my first touring band, which was Wise Guy way back when, and Wise Guy was around for a long time. We traveled all over the country, up in Canada, for many years, and that stopped around the 1993, I think, is when we stopped touring. And so it was a long time, a long time that uh, I played with that band. Today, I play with uh, Josephine's Machine, a um, couple of other projects, uh, I played at uh, uh, Big Brother Band for a long time over at a tourist trap in Treasure Island here locally and uh, just play with a lot of people. Played with Jason several times. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Lovely, thank you. Um, you were deeply involved in the Matt Laporte tribute show in St. Peter Petersburg in July 2011 which raised money for the Matt Laporte scholarship. Can you tell us in hindsight what were the most memorable moments of that experience? Definitely the uh, the Sabotage tribute when uh, that was a phenomenal show. Um, that was it, but there were so many people there. Um, there's Crimson Glory, you know, just the Florida Metal All Stars. It was it was a Great show from beginning to end. Uh, Jerry Outlaw's Bogus Pomp. Just a great day. And it wasn't just the bands that were the memorable part. There were so many people there. Sure. And it was, you know, some, some people I haven't seen in years. You know, some people I see every day. But it was just, it was, it was, a, it was a great day for a, a great person. Absolutely, definitely. Um, can you give us some insight into the drum game first? Wow. Um, being in the Tampa Bay area, recently we've turned into this like little drum headquarters with uh, D-Drum and now the new company Crush. Um, both of them are doing really cool stuff. <clears throat> Plus, 
there's some local companies. There's a, a local builder that I'm working with called Wack Drums, W-A-C apostrophe D, and uh, doing some really innovative stuff, um, which is starting to get a little bit of recognition through some major artists, which is, which is really cool. Um, I, I love all kinds of drums. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> but um, I like resonance, so I like uh, deep-sounding, full-sounding drums. Um, every, and everybody makes great drums. But it's, it's cool to be working close with uh, the WAG drum people and, uh, you know, having some input on, on what's coming out with some pretty, pretty cool stuff. Wicked. Watch, watch for him. Watch for him. Yeah. Um, as Matt was a guitar teacher here for many years, there must be a great sense of his spirit at the store. Um, can you share some memories of Matt with us? Wow. <laughs> Matt. Matt had his, a very unique personality that was just lovable. His smile was, you know, that's that says it all. When you see him smile, that that's Matt. He, we've had a lot of stories here, from him doing clinics here um, to, uh, you know, being here like every day, just hanging out. Um, one, one thing that I, I know definitely, which I've said before, um, Matt could pick up any guitar and make it sound like Matt. It could have been a piece of junk trade-in that we gave somebody 10 bucks for and we're just going to use it for parts. He could pick it up and play it, and and um, he could just make it sound great. He was a special player, as you all know. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Can you tell us about the seminars that are held here at the store? Who are some of the players that have showcased their insights and talents? Um, yeah, we do have a lot of clinics here. From the the top drummers, guitar players, to local up-and-coming people I have all played here. Um, and as for guitars, Michelangelo Badio, Vinnie Moore, um, you know, Matt Laporte, of course, um, people like that. We do a lot of drum clinics, so anyone from Terry Bozio to John Blackwell, and man, just so many people. Um, it's, it's, it's amazing to sit with those people and have them talk and tell you a story and explain something firsthand like that, that you just can't get off YouTube. You can't get it on a video. Um, except these interviews, of course, are the good ones. You got to watch these, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, the one-on-one -on -one thing. It's, it's, it's amazing. So if you have any clinics coming by your store, it doesn't matter what the instrument is, go see it. These people have done it all. Fantastic. And what are your current plans musically? To keep playing as much as possible. <laughs> it's it is uh, it's something I look forward to. Even after after working all day long, going playing a gig, um, the uh, it, the interaction with the people, the musicians, all that stuff. It's that's why we do it, man. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I wish it was for the money, but, you know, it's it's the love. Yeah. It's the love. Okay. As a very active um, proponent of Tampa Bay Jam Sessions, what are your thoughts on the local music scene? The local music scene here, it is very active. Um, it's not anything like it used to be. Times have changed. Um, it's pretty tough for original bands to get out and play. Um, and to make any money, and but the cover scene, the jam scene, is still active. If bands, my my band back in the day, Wise Guy, we were a combination. We were an original band that played cover songs to play gigs. Yeah. Okay. So if more bands would be a little bit more like that, they're not quite like that anymore these days. I don't know. I don't know why that train of thought has totally changed, but I think if um, even huge bands play cover songs, so you know, pick something in style with the music you're writing, play, play the, learn the cover songs, get out and play your material with it. And, you know, if you have a CD, sell it at the gig. But uh, 
the music scene here, it's still strong. Um, the jam sessions are almost overtaking the scene. There's so many of them, Monday through Friday, or Sunday through Monday, or no, except Friday and Saturday. The, the paying gigs are then, um, but uh, there's, there's a lot of great players here. They just want to play, so they're out of the jams. Yeah, okay, thank you. Now we're going to go to our director's question. Okay, you can't run from this one, John. Since we played together in the summer of 2000, that was uh, with Bad Intentions and Jamie Goodman, and as well as the Matt Laporte Tribute Show in 2011, is there any chance that you'll offer me a gig someday? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. Hey, one thing about the director, and that, that 2000 when we were playing together, he's, you said something to me that I've kept with me ever since, and I don't know if I told uh -oh. you this. Um, I was when I first started playing with his band, I was uh, I was called as a fill-in, and then it just like I became a regular kind of fill-in and, and that kind of thing with Jason. And the the first couple of gigs, I would say, Jason, what tempo do you guys do this song? And he says, just turn on the little radio in your head. And not only do I use that all the time to myself. When people talk about it or there's a tempo issue, it's like, turn on the radio in your head, sing the song. That's the tempo. So thank you very much. Fantastic. How can our out-of-state and overseas listeners contact Seminole Music? Uh, through our website, uh, SeminoleMusic.com. We're on Facebook, Seminole Music and Sound, uh, places like that. We, uh, yeah, man, our clinics are amazing. We did some stuff with uh, John Oliva. It was uh, not last year, the year before. And we even had overseas people come to the show. Fantastic. Because they, they heard about it. It was a special and intimate event. And Jason was there. <laughs> that was uh, my 50th birthday. Actually. Yeah, it was a great time, a great turnout. So, yeah, check out our website and Facebook. So it's, it's uh, interesting things. I think that was one of, or it might have been John's very first songwriting clinic and now he started to do some more of them they have more of those on the line as we speak too yeah. i think uh if i remember correctly chris kinder talking about um brazil is very interested in them doing that down there yeah it was it was a phenomenal event it was packed it was amazing and, I imagine, yeah. and and you know stories from john is you, you can't beat that <laughs> <laughs> you can't mm -mm. Well, thank you very much for taking your time out to talk to us, and I um, look forward to hearing from you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Literally. It's awesome. Pay attention. Yep. <laughs> Three, two, one, cut. Hey, Wally. What's up? What's going on, bro? Hi, hi.